I'm going to use engine oil I've used to lubricate the bearings on my piston. Because this is going to sit for a while and it won't run, I'm going to use some of the assembly lube just on my on my on the journals of the crank and of the connecting rod. So I'm just going to put a little bit on each face like so. I've lubricated the cylinder walls already with oil, so they're good to go. I'm going to use a spring compressor, sorry, a ring compressor, to uh, compress the rings on the piston. Um, this is a style I like to use here. Um, if you never used one of these before, it's got little indents on the bottom part. That's going to go against the block, and we got to make sure we have it large enough to not move our rings that we spaced out and I'll put it about probably three quarters of the way down the skirt of our piston like so out there and then I will just crank this thing up like so Sorry, you can't see at the moment here. So basically, I've just tightened it up. I want to tighten it to the point where I see as little spaces in here as I can. So I typically hold it here and give it a good turn until I can't turn anymore. I will even out any of this stuff here. So I'll tap it like so to make it nice and straight. I want to be sure that my piston is tight as it will go. Um, again, when I install the piston, I got to be sure that I have it in the correct way. And my dot on my piston needs to face down toward where my two push rods are going to come through right here. So it's got to go this way with the dot facing down like so. Uh, I'm going to watch and make sure I don't hit my crankshaft so what I'll usually do is I tap down here make sure that my ring compressor is nice and even and tight and I'm going to use the back side of a hammer a wooden hammer rubber hammer I don't want to hit it with anything metal I'm going to give it a good tap I'm going to have my hand in the bottom half of the, to, so just support that connecting rod and make sure it doesn't hit the crankshaft so if I give it a good hit it should go nice and smoothly and if it doesn't go then we try again like so like so okay very difficult to do without one of those guys pistons in um, I want to be sure that my connecting rod is now on my crankshaft, which I can see is. I'll do this. Put a bolt into there so you can see it a little better. And I'm right there. Next step, my rod journal cap. I'll just put a little bit of this guy on there again. And this is my oil thrower. So this is the piece that throws the oil. So I want to make sure it is facing down. So it faces this way. And of course on my, my board over here, I do have all of my, my nuts and bolts and whatnot in there all in order. So my two Connecting rod bolts are here, and I'll put those guys in place. I do have a spec for that um, that I need to look at. 
when torquing that guy on. If I look right here, uh, again on this piece of paper, connecting rod bolts, 14 newton meters, 10 foot pounds is what I'm running it at. Um, I use a snap on, little snap on torque wrench like so. Uh, works great, quarter inch, uh, great for those low numbers like that. I will have to move my piston around to make sure I get this on properly because it's hard to get at from here. So I'm just going to, whoops, it's easy here. Put that back down there. I'm just going to roll it around like so, so I can get my hands in there a little better. On the bottom here, on the bottom of the crank, I guess you want to see this, don't you? Not what I'm showing you. On the bottom of the crank, down here, this black unit that's bolted in with the wire coming out, that's my oil sen sensor. So I know I have oil in the, in the engine. It's wired into my ignition so that if something happens, it will uh, shut, the, shut the coil off so I don't have no more spark. So then I can't cause any damage. It's a little tight. So once I'm here, I'll put my bolts in. Uh, one thing I should mention as well is that this governor arm here, uh, you want to have it in before you start assembling. It's hard to get in later. Um, so it's best to put it in sooner. Okay. So now I want to torque these guys up. Again, my torque specification is... Fourteen newton meters. That's a ten millimeter bolt. I do have a little electric ratchet I like to use too. But keep in mind that if you're using this guy, don't let it tighten up. Or maybe he won't fit. There we go. There, I won't tighten it. Just run them up. Like so. Now I'll torque it. This guy on here. I'll go, I'm gonna go with Newton meters. So I'm just gonna change my units. Newton meters. And 14. There we go. It's a great little torque wrench. It tells you if you're over torquing or, or when you're approaching. It has uh, lights and it also vibrates as well. So I don't have to lash it, physically look at it. There. And it does tell me the exact torque. So I know if I've gone over by and how, by how much. Okay, so there's both of my... So now I probably want to just roll it around and make sure that everything feels good. And my piston's moving in my cylinder. Which it is.